Hello, I'm Lorna Mackay from the Perfume Society, and I have got a huge opportunity today to speak to Ruth Mastenbrook, who is a classically trained perfumer. Hello, Ruth. Hi, Lorna. Thanks for inviting me. I'm, I'm delighted. And the first question I'm going to ask you is, what is a classically trained perfumer? I would say it's a perfumer who has been trained in perhaps a traditional way, which is um, a structured way of learning and memorizing the odor profiles of, um, in my case, it was uh, something like 2000 ingredients. Wow. And that's not, that's not the only thing because you have to be able to smell and differentiate and, but then also combine those ingredients in um, a fascinating way. And so you can't really teach that. So that has to come from your, inside yourself. Absolutely. And it's also life's experience and, and what, everything that you're smelling day in, day out. And may I ask, is there a time scale? I know you're still learning, you're still working <laughs> very, right. very hard and bringing fabulous smells to us, but is there a time scale where you can say you're a classically trained perfumer? I, I'm not so sure that there is. I would say uh, you probably need to have at least five years of training to, th this is in a, um, a company that is involved in creating fragrances for lots of different brands and lots of different types of products. And uh, so part of that classical training is actually also working on briefs, working on projects for uh, all kinds of different uh, brands and products so that you learn what works and what doesn't work because and, I think that's the big difference between uh, the way that I did it and perhaps um, an indie perfumer who has their own uh, brand and is maybe just working on fragrances for that brand. And they're all fabulous different ways of learning mm -hmm. different ways of concocting and also different people like different things but what I'd like to do today is really talk through some of the fragrances you've created because you went from working from a big company to creating your own brand and that's a really brave thing to do putting your name on the front of a brand because everything in there comes from you and I'd like to know more shall we start with the first one that you did yes. was that your picture Yes, yes. Uh, uh, so I, I used a lot of my favorite ingredients to create signature, rose, bergamot, patchouli, they were really key. But, uh, and I wanted for my very first own fragrance of uh, my own brand to make a sheep because that is my all time favorite accord for which you need those ingredients and um, oak moss and uh, but it needed to be different from whatever else is on the market. And so that's it, that's why it took me a few years to get it right. But that, that's commendable that you took the time to get it the way you wanted. And it's interesting because when I think of Ruth Mastenbrook as a brand, I always think you've got a style that I absolutely adore. And it's it, for me, it's very much fresh and sexy. That, that's kind of how I always think about it. And you start oh, to- how nice. Different. No, 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 it's true. Um, um, I, um, I, when I first time I smelt Signature, I, I knew it was the Shepra, of course. And Shepra is, is having all these wonderful ingredients like the oak moss and patchouli mm. and everything, which gives it a really lovely sensual dry down. Mm. Um, I was blown away though by how fresh it was. And even in all your other fragrances, I still, I still feel that kind of lineage going through the other one. So I'm I'm a fan and mm. I'm delighted. So signature, yes. Next one that you created? But the next one was Amorosa, which means a woman in love, because I had fallen in love with a part of uh, Italy. And uh, I wanted to express that um, in one fragrance using amber notes kind of for the the rocks and the mountains and tuberose for the wonderful flowers all around and then there's a, a wonderful fruity opening of yes. watermelon which is quite unusual 
And uh, but yes, it's um, it's not just for women, although it's mostly women who wear it. And uh, but it's uh, for a woman, a man who is in love with life. That's what we say. And I'm delighted to hear that you think that my fragrances are sexy. Uh, but I also hear how they are happy and uplifting. You know, with the tuberose, <laughs> the first thing that I, I felt it was juicy. So you you know you're you're you almost start salivating when you smell it. It's really weird. But anybody who loves a tuberose must try this. Absolutely mm. must try try this because it's not a cloying heavy tuberose. Yeah. With that fresh intro introduction, it really takes on a different meaning. And I think you're absolutely right. It's a happy fragrance. Really, I'm going on holiday very soon, and I'm really thinking. Gosh, this makes me think of a happy time. So off we go. Next one. The next was Oxford. Uh, I studied chemistry at Oxford and not that uh, chemistry had anything to do with this fragrance. It was much more the feeling of being challenged uh, in a new environment and to learn new things about yourself. That was the theme of Oxford. And I've used uh, some really sweet and wonderfully warm ingredients like cashmere and, and vanilla absolute to provide uh, a warm, um support i guess for anyone who is discovering those new things do you know i think we all need a bit of it at the moment yes. but what, the, the words because i did write down a couple of words when i was mm. smelling what it meant to me mm. and what it means to me is comfort and cocooning oh, and it, it, so you. you know with That's the exactly. vanilla harping back to our baby days of uh, um, perhaps I don't know but I did feel it was a very comforting and I think when you go to a new environment it is something that you need to feel comfortable with mm -hmm. you know to express yourself so yeah I and it's very different from Amaro's mm -hmm. completely different yeah, smell but there's different. still that fresh sexiness in it as well mm -hmm. Well, I also hear about Oxford that uh, people have worn it uh, in difficult situations, perhaps uh, for an interview or where they are being challenged and it makes them feel empowered. So that's also really nice to hear. Do you know, I, I do believe we're, we're looking to fragrance to support us in many, many more ways since the pandemic. We realise it can act actually, well, with science has proven, it can actually change your mood. So mm -hmm. that, I, that doesn't surprise me, your comments at all. And then the next one, which I'm a huge fan of, <laughs> um, is Dajian. Is that Dajian. my saying? Well, Dajian. Dajian, uh, yeah. Yeah. Dajian, it means dawn in Old English. And it's wonderfully uh, citrus with uh, a, a dash of lime, but also a, a hint of rum. So there's a little bit of a naughtiness in there. But the, my idea here was you're sitting at the edge of the sea with the sun rising. You may have had a heavy night, maybe not. But um, in any case, you're facing a new day and uh, you have everything to live for. It's, a, it's also a very, I hope, uplifting fragrance and with the, with the orange blossom and fresh citrusy notes. Oh, I'm a sucker for orange blossom too. <laughs> but but I, I do feel it's a fragrance when you put it on. I often put it on before going on a journey because it's uplifting. And you know, you know, you're going to have kind of uh, a long time in a train or a bus or a plane or whatever. And it actually, it's also, it's not going to invade somebody else's territory. So it's mm -hmm. very, it's very much. I wear it for me, yeah. and I definitely got a bottle when I'm at work in London, and it's one of my go-to's when I'm out, you know, out and about in London, definitely without a doubt. And then, of course, we've got the. Um, Fire dance. Fire dance. Yes, fire dance is a very different a celebration. Um, yes, it's a, it, it's got a, a leathery note that is becomes a bit smoky and also rose. So it's it's uh, more provocative, I would say, than yeah. some of my other fragrances. You you have to, I don't know, know know yourself well to be confident to wear it i would think <laughs> well i put down statement perfume with that exactly. contour exactly. up and I, but it's also it's a clean it's a clean sexy rose and mm. if you like rose it's not the clawing it's still uplifting it's still bright and and, mm. and you know it makes you again feel good so you can stride out and just give you that little bit more confidence if you're needing it and people know you're there when you're wearing yes. fire dance, yes. that's for sure yeah, that's right. Yes. That's lovely. 
<laughs> now, and last year, um, well, recently you've added many eau de toilettes to the mm. uh, range, yes. which is okay. absolutely amazing mm. and quite different from the, the original five fragrances. They are. So this is the Magic of Nature collection, and we are celebrating uh, three British um, oils, so essential oils that are grown, harvested, and uh, produced, um, distilled in England, in Britain. And uh, so- Careful there. In fact, um, yeah, exactly. So uh, Zephyr has uh, peppermint oil from uh, mm. Summerdown Mint and uh, from Summerdown Farm. And uh, I just fell in love with this oil a few years ago when I was working on a project with them. And uh, it is so refreshing. And of course, the, what you can't ha have with mint notes is that uh, something begins to smell like toothpaste, but by combining it with some uh, fresh green notes that kind of went go alongside it, that makes it, and some spicy notes and a bit of black currant, it gives it, uh, it's got an edge, but it's, and it's very invigorating and energizing. I then think the we have yeah, I think we had it in a platinum box. So if anybody wants to try it, it's in the platinum platinum right. box. Well, but we do have your discovery set on the site too. Um, but with with Zephyr, I um I do believe that Zephyr is for me, it's it's also a walk in the forest. Yes, yes, there's something very, very outdoorsy about it. And yeah. uh, so yes, you're you're transported straight away yeah. to that kind of environment. Yeah, and in, in fact, the order toilets, I went up for a walk in the forest with Zephyr. Where did I go? Um, um, and then I, I went in the woods with Gaia. So tell us a little bit about Gaia. So Gaia is more floral, and uh, the key essential oil here is chamomile. So it's very calming and soothing, de-stressing. So in fact, we've been able to use some of the aromatherapy kind of benefits of these oils, um, but shaped the fragrance around them, not that they are dominating in any way. Uh, so I've used uh, Ylang Ylang and mm -hmm. a freesia note in particular, uh, so very fresh, a little bit green. And it, it, so I hope it makes you feel you're kind of floating. Um, it, that's, it, that's it, my, it, but it, it is, it's that you kind of go for a walk in the woods and you experience, you know, kind of that calming. And again, it's grounding you, which is fantastic. And then I went on a wild journey to the sea. <laughs> yes, Marlin. Marlin yes. Uh, incorporates lavender oil, uh, mm -hmm. a beautiful lavender oil, uh, very special. And um, it's got some more uh, ozonic notes, so marine notes, so fresh air and a little bit citrus, but there's also a grounding, there's a, a balancing that uh, the lavender brings with some woody notes. So it's uh, yeah. it's perhaps a little bit more complex than Gaia and Zephyr, but it's, it's very, um, uh, also uplifting, I have to say. Well, it gives you that feel-good factor as when you go to the sea, you can almost smell the, the coastal air yes. um, when, when you smell this fragrance. I really believe your fragrances take us all in a journey. I certainly, I've had a ball, you know, just reminding myself of how fabulous they are. Thank you so much, Ruth. I really appreciate what you're doing with it. And as I say, you know, the um, eau de toilettes are the, and, and some of our discovery boxes. We also have your discovery box on site if you want to try it from you, for yourself, because I think it's a great way of dipping into the, you know, the classically trained perfumer, Ruth Massenbrook. Thank you. Thank great. you.